There are two conditions under which a motion of a particle can be called a projectile motion. One, acceleration should be due to gravity only, usually the Earth's gravity. But if the experiment is happening on any other celestial body, say like Jupiter, that would qualify as well. And two, the motion should happen in two dimensions only. So anything that moves in two dimensions and under the force of gravity can be called a projectile. It could be a cricket ball hit off the ground or a basketball projected towards a hoop or the angry birds you see in the famous game we all have played. So if a ball is thrown up with a velocity v0 at an angle theta, the velocity v0 can be split into two components. One vertical and the other horizontal. So the horizontal component will be v0 cos theta0 and the vertical will be v0 sin theta0. Now something important to notice is that the only force that acts on the ball is acting in the vertical direction that is the force of gravity and since there is no horizontal force acting on the ball the velocity of the ball does not change throughout its path so this makes things a little simpler for us that is the fact that the velocity does not change in the horizontal direction now another piece of information that makes projectile motion less complicated is that you can study the vertical part of the motion and the horizontal part totally separately meaning the two have no effect on each other and this is demonstrated by a very famous and a simple experiment where a ball is dropped from a certain height h and it takes time t to reach the ground and the same ball when it is thrown from the same height but given a certain horizontal velocity reaches the ground in same time t showing that giving a horizontal velocity had no effect whatsoever on its vertical motion. Now before we get into the equations of projectile motion let us see how the velocity of a projectile changes as it moves from its initial position on the ground to its final position. At time t equal to zero the initial velocity v0 is at an angle theta and has a horizontal component v0 x that we know is v0 cos theta0 and a vertical component v0 y that is v0 sin theta0. After some time the velocity vy reduces and you should expect that to happen because when you throw a ball up you know its velocity reduces because the force of gravity is constantly pulling it down. So we show vy component with a vector length which is smaller than this one. However, you can see that the horizontal component vx is the same as it was when the ball was launched. And this is because of the reason we discussed earlier that there is no force in the horizontal direction and therefore the velocity should not change. Now we can see that the projectile has reached its maximum height and the vertical component of the velocity is zero which again should be no surprise since any object thrown up in the air attains zero velocity when it reaches a maximum height. And once again you can see that the horizontal component of the velocity is unchanged. Now when the projectile is going down we see that the vertical component of the velocity is increasing in magnitude but the vector is now pointing in the downward direction. Again this is quite like a ball thrown vertically up and on its way back its velocity starts increasing. Also you can see the horizontal component is unchanged. Now when the projectile hits the ground its velocity has the same magnitude as when it took off from the ground. So the magnitude of the vertical component is the same as this one but opposite in direction and the magnitude of the horizontal component is also the same as this one which anyway did not change throughout its flight. So now we are ready to work with the equations that describe projectile motion and we will work with two sets of equation one for horizontal motion 
and the other for vertical motion. And remember, both the motions, horizontal and vertical, are independent of each other. So let us start with the horizontal motion, which is easier to analyze because the velocity is constant. If we take v naught x as the velocity in the horizontal direction, we can say that the displacement in time t is velocity in the horizontal direction multiplied by time t. Or if the initial position is x naught and the position at time t is x, the displacement is x minus x naught, which is equal to v naught x multiplied by time t or we could write this as x minus x naught is equal to v naught cos theta naught times t now let us study the vertical motion of the projectile and as i said earlier here you can treat the object as a particle under free fall so all the equations we learned for an object falling under gravity will fit in quite well here so we could use the equation y minus y naught is equal to v naught y t minus half g t squared and writing v naught y as v naught sine theta naught which is the initial velocity in the vertical direction we get y minus y naught is equal to v naught sine theta naught t minus half g t squared we could also use the equation v y is equal to v naught y minus gt and write it for the projectile as v y is equal to v naught sine theta naught minus gt another equation we can use is v y square is equal to v naught y square minus 2g y minus y naught and we can write it as v y square is equal to v naught sine theta naught square minus 2g y minus y naught and this is it these are all the equations you need to solve any projectile motion problem but we can do a bit of mathematical jugglery to arrive at a few more useful equations that will help you speed up problem solving so the first one is to find the equation that connects the coordinates y and x of the projectile at any point in its path that is if you are told the y coordinate of a projectile in its path this equation which we'll derive in a moment should help you find the x coordinate and vice versa so if we eliminate time t between these two equations we discussed earlier and rearrange the terms what you get is y is equal to tan theta naught x minus gx squared upon 2 times v naught cos theta naught squared and in this equation we have taken x naught and y naught as 0 that is the projectile starts from the origin now what you'll observe is that this equation is of the form y is equal to ax plus bx squared and if you recall your geometry you will realize that this is the equation of a parabola. So this equation shows that a projectile follows a path which is parabolic in shape. Another important measure to know is the horizontal range. And it is important to be clear about what exactly we mean by this term. So the horizontal range is the horizontal distance covered by a projectile between the point from where it is projected to the point when it reaches the same initial height. So here, if it starts from zero as the initial y value, then when it reaches y is equal to zero again, that is this point, then this is what you call the horizontal range. So if you're standing on top of a building, and you throw a ball up like this then the horizontal range would be this and not this because you see the ball regains its initial height that is from where you threw at this point 
and not over here. To find range R, we can put x minus x0 is equal to R, where R represents the range in this equation, and y minus y0 is equal to 0 in this equation, because this would mean y is equal to y0 or the same height. Then what we get is r is equal to v0 cos theta0 t and 0 is equal to v0 sin theta0 t minus half gt square. And if we eliminate t between these two equations, what we get is r is equal to 2 v0 square sin theta0 times cos theta0 upon g. And if we use the identity sin 2 theta is equal to 2 sin theta cos theta, then this part you see becomes sine 2 theta. So we have range r is equal to v naught square sine 2 theta naught upon g. Another interesting thing you should know is that if the initial velocity is the same, the range would be the same for complementary angles. And let me explain this with an example. So if a projectile leaves at an angle of 30 degrees or 60 degrees that are complementary angles, the range will be same. Likewise, you could take another set of complementary angles like 20 degrees and 70 degrees, the range would be the same. And this actually would become obvious if you see this formula or more importantly, this part of the formula where if you take, let us say, theta is 30 degrees and then 60 degrees, you'll find that sine of 2 times theta would be the same for both angles or sine of 2 into 30 is equal to sine of 2 into 60 is equal to 0 0.866 or say sine of 2 into 15 is equal to sine of 2 into 75 which is equal to 0 0.5 and so on and so forth. Now, with this understanding, here is an interesting and insightful question for you. We know that for projectile that leaves at 30 degrees or 60 degrees, the range will be the same. So the question is, will the object take same time to cover this range? You can pause the video for a moment and think. So if you said that the time taken by the projectile that leaves at 60 degrees is more than the time taken by the projectile at 30 degrees, your answer would be right. And the reason for this is that if you see the horizontal component of velocity of the projectile leaving at 60 degrees, it'll be this, while the one leaving at 30 degrees is this. Clearly, the horizontal component in case of 30 degrees is more than that at 60 degrees that means more velocity at 30 degrees in the horizontal direction and since the distance to be covered is the same time taken by the projectile leaving at 60 degrees would be more than the one leaving at 30 degrees well you also know that the sine of 90 degrees gives you the maximum value that is one so the sine of 2 theta here would be maximum if 2 theta is equal to 90 degrees or theta is equal to 45 degrees. This means that if you take theta equal to 45 degrees, this part of the equation becomes 1, which also means that this becomes maximum or you get the maximum range. In other words, if you want the range to be maximum, the angle at which you project an object should be 45 degrees. And therefore, the maximum possible range is v naught square upon g. So if you want to learn more about motion in two dimensions and derivation and use of various equations, I would suggest you head over to this playlist and please do give a thumbs up. If you like the video, that'll be really helpful. And let's catch up in the next video.